Hello, welcome to the liturgy of the world with Father Evaristus Egimeyo Abu for today, Tuesday of the 20th week in Ordinary Time, Year 2. And since it is August 20th, we remember St. Bernard of Clairvaux. What is God saying to us today? It is hard for the rich, those who trust in their wealth, to enter heaven. God is not against riches, but when we turn to worship our wealth or become proud due to what we have, we make ourselves unfit for God's kingdom. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 1 to 10. Responsorial Psalm comes from Deuteronomy chapter 32. And our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 19, verses 23 to 30. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Tar says the Lord God, Because your heart is proud, and you have said, I am a God, sit in the seat of the, seat of the gods, in the heart of the seas, yet you are both a man and no God. Though you consider yourselves as wise as a God, you are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding, you have gotten wealth for yourself, and have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom in trade, you have increased your wealth, and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you consider yourself as wise as a god, therefore, behold, I will bring strangers upon you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defy your splendor. They shall thrust you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the heart of the seas. Will you still say, I am a god, in the presence of those who slay you? Though you are but a man and no God, in the hands of those who, wound, who would wound you, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of foreigners. For I have spoken, says the Lord God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I kill and I make alive. I kill and I make alive. I would have said I would scatter them afar. I will make the remembrance of them cease from among men. Had I not feared provocation by the enemy, lest the adversaries should judge amiss. I kill and I make alive. Lest they should say, Our hand is triumphant. The Lord has not wrought all this, but they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. I kill and I make alive. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, unless their rock had sold them, and the Lord had given them up? I kill, and I make alive. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and their doom comes swiftly. For the Lord will vindicate his people, and have compassion on his servants. I kill, and I make alive. Hallelujah, 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 ha, hallelujah. Though Jesus Christ was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Ha, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 
At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it will be hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. What then shall we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man shall sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last and the last first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. Why is it hard for the rich to enter heaven? In today's Gospel passage, the disciples are astonished to hear Jesus say, It is hard for the rich to enter heaven. Is God against riches? Wasn't Abraham the richest man on earth in his time? After Job's trials, didn't God restore his riches twice as much as he had before? Even Solomon, when God told him to ask for anything and he asked only for wisdom, didn't God add riches as well? Isn't it the case that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it? Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 Why would it be hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Number one is pride. Wealth makes us consider ourselves better than others. Addressing the prince of Tyre in today's first reading, God says, Because your heart is proud, and you have said, I am a God, yet you are but a man and no God. By your wisdom and understanding, you have gotten wealth for yourself. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will bring strangers upon you, the most terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defy your splendor. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 2 to 7. Wealth makes us think of ourselves as gods. Since there is only one God in heaven, we cannot compete with God. That is why it will be hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven, because they consider themselves to be God. Number two, to be idolatrous is to love created things more than God. Idolatry is another thing that will prevent us from entering heaven or make heaven difficult for us to enter. As Jesus Christ teaches us, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, it's not possible for you to love God with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your heart, and still love the riches that you possess. You cannot serve two masters. You can only be faithful to one and despise the others. Now, let us honestly ask ourselves, is my desire for God greater than my desire for material riches and luxuries? Haven't I made a God of my possessions? In today's Gospel passage, Jesus says, Everyone who has left their houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Matthew chapter 19 verse 29 Jesus Christ is encouraging us to be detached from the things of this world so as heaven can be easy for us to enter. Because you cannot enter heaven when you are carrying a baggage of attachment to material possessions. Entering heaven will be hard for anyone who worships their wealth. 3. Selfishness The greatest commandment is to love God, that is, do not worship your riches, and to love your neighbor as yourself. When we are rich, 
we are supposed to be channels of blessing to others. But when we refuse to be channels of blessing to others, heaven becomes difficult for us. The third reason heaven is hard for the rich is selfishness. Refusal to help those in need, yet wasting their resources. God is love. Heaven is a place where people love each other and think of the interests of others. If I cannot practice this love here on earth, it will be hard for me to learn in heaven. In Matthew 25, Jesus describes Judgment Day. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, who blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34 to 36. Remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Also remember the story of the rich man whose land yielded in abundance. And in his plan of enjoyment, he said he would pull down his bands. God is against wastefulness. If you have, no matter how small, be of help to your neighbor. Today we remember St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He was born near Dijon in France in, 19, in 1090 of a noble family. Bernard was a man of great holiness and wisdom. And although he was often in very poor health, he was active in many of the great public debates of his time. He strongly opposed the luxurious lives of some of the clergy and fought against the persecution of the Jews. He was also a prolific writer of an inspiring rather than a technical kind. The church is always suffering from corruption and always being renewed. If St. Bernard, so often healed, could take a leading part in this renewal, what excuse do you have? May God bless his words in our hearts. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.